from Feline Jungle and right now we're in Ikea in Brooklyn. In the back of my mind, I also want to get a greenhouse cabinet but those are usually sold out so if I'm lucky today, maybe I'll be able to score one. Of course, the miserable cabinet that I've been dreaming about for months was nowhere to be found. I had a notification set on to alert me whenever I was back in stores, but every single time I went to Ikea, it was sold out. At this point, I kind of gave up. Actually, I just gave up. Until one day, the doorbell rang and it arrived right in front of my doorsteps. The Millsville cabinet in white magically appeared at my door. I was so shocked. So what happened was that Chucky had ordered one for my birthday present. I had joked about it, but I didn't think he took me seriously. I felt a rush of excitement and gratefulness. I was just such a happy girl that day. So I've been following this Instagram account called IKEA Greenhouse Cabinet for maybe two years now. I was very fascinated by the idea of giving a piece of furniture a different purpose and turning it into a functional space for growing plants. I love the luminous creative ways you can DIY your cabinet and also how easy it is to assemble. This wide muzzle cabinet was the perfect dimension for my house. I've seen other people do this with different IKEA cabinets like the Rudsta, the Toth, and the Fabricor. By the way, I am not sponsored by IKEA in any way even though I would love to be. The reason I need a mini greenhouse is because I live in New York City where the seasons go from different extremes. Some of my plants become really unhappy when winter comes around. In the dry and cold weather, my more high maintenance plants have stunt growth and yellowing leaves because they do enjoy an environment with higher humidity. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this problem that I have with not providing the optimal environment for your plant babies. It would mean the world to me if I can make my plants happier and produce healthy green leaves. As a plant enthusiast, I am also obsessed with aesthetic ways to display my plants. I just want to say you don't have to use an IKEA cabinet to make a greenhouse. I've seen people use fish tanks, terrarium cabinets for the same purpose. I'm also one of those people who don't like reading the instruction when it comes to assembling furniture. I know I'm the worst. So it's a lot better to have Chucky there to do all the steps in order from putting together the base first, then building the framework to slide in the glass sides and then topping it off with the metal lid on top. The cabinet itself is complete, but there are still a lot of accessories that need to be put inside in order for it to function as a greenhouse. The first thing we have is this pegboard used as a structure to hold onto the plants. We also have a grow light to provide light for the plants. I'm using a 32 inch mother plant spectrum light. We have this mini fan used to circulate the air and prevent mold. We also have a humidifier to increase the moisture levels inside the cabinet. All of these items can be found on Amazon. I also listed it in my description below. But how do I install all of these devices inside the cabinet? You probably looked up a lot of videos on how to run the cables and there are many different ways of doing this. I did a lot of research myself and through my research, I think the easiest and least invasive way is to enlarge the existing hole in the back of the top lid of the cabinet. That hole is originally designed to run IKEA lights that can be installed in the cabinet. However, it is too small to fit all the cables required for the accessories. To enlarge this existing hole, you will need a power drill paired with a metal drill bit. In my case, the grow light had the biggest outlet, so I started with that. Then I gently threaded through the wires from my fan and my head fire into the same hole. I find this process to be a lot easier than drilling a hole in the bottom of the cabinet. With the devices wired in, the next thing we want to do is to put the top lid back onto the cabinet and position the cabinet into the final position next to my couch. Now we can play around with how you want to place each of the devices. First, I want to attach the scroll light on top of the cabinet. There's not a lot that I can attach to except for this extrusion in the middle that has a hole through it. Without any additional drilling, I'm going to attach the grow light using a zip tie through that hole. That should be enough. Mm -hmm. 
Second, I want to attach this fan to the top corner to provide air circulation. This fan is perfect because it's tiny and it can be rotated, but I have nothing to attach to the top of the cabinet. So, without additional modifications, I thought using a magnet clip to attach it to the top is the best solution. Just make sure that the magnet is strong enough. Third thing we're going to install is this IKEA pegboard. Like many people, I chose not to install the glass shelves that came with the cabinet. The glass kind of acts like a barrier that prevents air circulation between layers, which I did not want. I wanted more of a open air concept. So we installed an IKEA pegboard as a way to attach my plants instead. It's also super easy to install this because the cabinet framing already has holes for you to screw your pegboard onto. If you screw too tightly, you will now have space in the back for the accessories to hook onto. I used the wires we installed before as buffers to leave space between the pegboard and the glass back. Fourth item we're going to be installing is our humidifier. I chose this humidifier because it was small and it came with many features that I can experiment with, like the 360 rotation in two directions and different spray modes. I'll definitely be testing these different modes to see which one works best for my cabinet, so I'll keep you updated. Since we already installed the wire for this, before all I'm going to do is fill it up with water and plug it in. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, it looks even better when everything is plugged in. It just comes to life. I'm just playing around with accessories that I bought from IKEA. I'm going to fill the pegboard with ways to attach the plants. Now, I think the most useful one is definitely the shelves. I can put three mini pods in each one. I also bought these containers with a lid on them that could be hooked onto the board. Now I'm not sure what to do with these, but I'm trying to use the lids as platforms to put plants on. Maybe it's not the most stable structure, but let's just see what happens. I'm also thinking that the plastic part can be repurposed as a propagation jar or a self watering pot. Not going to lie, this DIY IKEA cabinet is definitely an investment. Here is a breakdown of the material list and the price to create this look. The total came out to 581 US dollars. I did not calculate how much this cost until I made this video and honestly I am shocked at how much money went into making this. Okay, so hear me out. The biggest expenses are the cabinet and the grow light. If you go with the cheapest IKEA cabinet, which is the Detoff, you can cut your price down from $230 down to $65. You can also buy a cheaper brand of grow light like the Mars Hydro, which is selling for something as low as $90. By the way, if you want a list of products used and a comparison of cheaper alternatives, I will be sending out a comparison sheet I made for your use in my next newsletter. Just imagining how much happier my plants will be in here is definitely worth the investment in my opinion. Time to bring in the plant babies! I brought in ones that will really enjoy the increase in humidity. Most of them are my anthuriums like my newly imported anthurium magnificum, my struggling anthurium queen, and my anthurium vitarifolium. I also brought in some philodendrons that I've started to see stunt in growth like my Florida Beauty, Pink Princess, and my Splendid. I would imagine that these plants would require less watering and would grow faster as a result of being in this enclosed, controlled environment. I don't know, I've never really done this before, so I'll be using my plant journal to document their progress inside the cabinet from plant care, growth, and water tracking. You can download a free plant care sheet by signing up to my mailing list at felinejungle.com or purchase my complete plant journal in my shop. 
After rearranging the plants multiple times, I am finally satisfied with my arrangement. As you can see here, there's a lot of empty spaces which can be filled up with potentially new plants. <laughs> Next video will be a one month update to check up on this cabinet to see how everything is doing. That's it for this video, YouTube family. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave me any suggestions, questions in the comment section. I would love to know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and join my newsletter for exclusive info, giveaways, freebies, just for my feeling jungle community. Okay, bye!